words, didn't it? Now, what would a person do if they're discouraged on a daily basis? And you need to be encouraged. What do you do? You what? You seek it out or you stay in your doldrums, don't you? And, and those are the people we need to form relationships with that we know they live constantly discouraged. Why do you suppose people would live constantly discouraged? Some things in their life do what, Sandra? Feel bad about themselves? Yeah. For what reasons? Can you think of a bunch of reasons that, that uh, somebody feels discouraged? Or finances? Bad relationship? And I notice you and Tony are not sitting together. So. <laughs> Is that relationship okay? Oh, you can't see? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> some other things, you know. Finances, bad relationships. Some other things that keep people down. What about kids? What about kids that are discouraged and, and living that way? What are they suffering that makes them discouraged? Sure. Well, exactly. They suffer more from a lack of encouragement but that makes them discouraged on a regular basis. So that's a tough thing. Uh, I look back and my school days were tough. You know, I was the only kid in class with curly, bushy hair. And by the time I got in junior high school, I'd look at myself in the mirror and I'd just, I hate you. You know, because all the guys at school had had duck tails, they were, they were cool. Me, I couldn't do a whole lot about my hair, it was just there. You know. So, but in the 80s, the uh, afro came along. I was, in, I was in vogue. I was in vogue, because you guys are straight hair, you let your hair grow and it just grows long. I let my hair grow, and it just grows out, just like that. And I played ball. It was really hard to keep a ball cap on when you had a bushy head. <clears throat> Why do you suppose some people cannot encourage others? You what? They don't get it themselves. They're not used to it. What else? Why do you suppose some people can't encourage another person? Now, the Bible tells us to be encouragers. It actually lists several things, I believe in Romans, that uh, you can do this, you can do this, or, and be an encourager. Uh, can't we all be encouragers? We may not all be overtly encouraging, but... We can encourage by the way we live our lives, can't we? You, know, you can let somebody else know. If you live your life as a, a Christian and live it the way the Lord wants you to, and people see that, you don't have to say a word to them. He says some people don't know how to be encouragers. They're afraid it might be not, not be taken well. And that's on my list. I need some other ideas. Why people can't be encouragers? Afraid of rejection? Yeah, along the same lines. Yeah, well, some people can't. And the Lord makes provisions for that. You can do other things. But like we just discussed, 
live your life in a way that other people will admire it uh, spiritually, and, and you can encourage that way. Some of my best encouragers as I grew up were people that never said a word to me. I just held them in awe because of the way they lived their lives, uh, their attitudes about life. What else? That's true. <clears throat> Alvin said that a lot of people don't feel they have the right to be an encourager because they're not up to the level of being the great encourager. But you can find a place to encourage somebody. Any other ideas? Do what? Yeah, they burn out. Yeah. Well, I've been encouraging this kid all my life, and he's still not where I want him to be. How about jealousy? If you're jealous, that you don't want somebody else to do better because you, wanna, you want that contrast between your life and theirs to remain. Now, what's lacking there? Self-esteem for one, yeah. What's lacking with it? Bingo. Loving somebody else enough to want them to do better in life. Even if it makes you, even if they outshine you. That's what the Lord told us to do. Put our brothers first. Put others first. And we... And in a way, that encourages us, doesn't it? Uh, if you put somebody else first and they, they rise up a little bit because of your encouragement, because they notice that you put them first, uh, what does that do for you? Right. And even if they did, if you love them enough, you want them to do better than you. Yeah. Exactly. I ran way ahead of myself, so I have to check my notes because we've talked about things that are further down. And we talked about the several ways we could encourage. By the way you live, by developing relationships with people, holding people accountable in a loving way, right? right. If we can, we can sure try to hold people accountable uh, trying to be the big boss, you know. So, yeah. It's, uh, and that happens in my business. If my staff is not doing what they're supposed to do, there's ways that I can deal with them uh, one way is in a loving way, encouraging them. The other way is just getting in their face. And a lot of times when you get in their face, all that does is turn them off and they go home with a bad attitude. So. Obviously, you're talking about Sherry. Andrew said that she was her drugs were getting cockeyed, and her best friend told her that she needed to get help. Uh, and that encouraged Sandra, because she did it in a loving way, it encouraged Sandra to get help. Now, 
we should all be encouraged by Sandra opening up about that right here in this in this classroom. So you encourage us because you've got guts. <laughs> You're a pain in the neck sometimes, but you've got guts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sandra knows me well enough to know that that was in a loving way. <laughs> I don't want, I'm not going to let her get up here and tell you what she thinks about me, because she will. In a loving way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but they won't take it that way. <laughs> How many discouragers have you come across in your lifetime? Have you? As a youngster? You never forget them, do you? You never forget people that throw a monkey wrench in your life. That make you feel less than you are. And hopefully it's not been your parents. Because that's our haven. That's what we run back to. Uh, I had a great mom who was a great encourager. My dad was an alcoholic. He didn't have time to encourage very much because, uh, because of his mental status most of the time. But my mother was such an encourager that she overshadowed that. And in a sense, my daddy encouraged me because he encouraged me not to be like he was. You know? And but we don't like that kind of reverse encouragement, do we? Anybody want to say anything at this point? People encouraged you. And because you failed their encouragement? So encouragers ended up disappointing you. Encouragement that's fueled by selfishness. And that's what we meant when we talked about, about that kind of falls under the category of jealousy because they don't, people who are false encouragers or discouragers don't want to see you do better. And that, do what? Yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's where the love is, doesn't exist, you know. And we see that in the world all the time, don't we? Now, we don't want to see it in the family of, of God, do we? That, yeah. But we do see it in the family of God, don't we? We do see it. Like in our own families, we, there's, we all have had in, discouragers in our families growing up and maybe now. But... when people want to pull you down to rise them up, uh, we all see through that, don't we? And that's just a simple, we just bring it back to the Lord. That's just a simple lack of love. And love is the absolute bottom line for everything we're talking about today Everything the Lord talks about, the bottom line is love. Now, tell me what love is. 
Oh, don't quote scripture to me. <laughs> you're right. You're right. And that's what, that's what, <laughs> you're right. But bottom line, you said it a while ago before when you were talking. What is love? Unselfishness. I care more about you than you, than I do for myself. That's pure and simple love. And love is encouraging, absolutely. Would you rather be around an encourager than a discourager? <laughs> Debbie Downers, yeah. Would you rather? <laughs> what <do> you <laughs> Haters, yeah. Well, and you know what hate is? The definition of love, hate. The absence of love. So you don't have to hate somebody, but if you don't love them, you still hate them. The Lord said that with his own mouth. What did you say? I didn't say, okay. She said something. Sherry said something. I would a whole lot rather be around an encourager than a discourager. Cheryl? And that's why a lot of people can't be encouraged. Cheryl said that the scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's an absolute. And, and that you can't encourage somebody if you don't care enough about how they feel. So when do we get to, when do we get to demonstrate that? Demonstrate love or encouragement. Yeah, it all, it folds together. I'm not going to tell everybody what you just said. <laughs> she said, for instance, if you're at Walmart and seeing an old lady, uh, <laughs> we got some old men too, <clears throat> but you see an old timer pushing a cart and you say, here, let me take that cart back for you. And she says, that's love. And then she talks about, then she talked about people who, she called them bad sinners. <laughs> Bad sinner, sinner, good sinner. Whoa. <laughs> but anyway, people who are sinners, if you show them love, that's encouragement. That's absolute encouragement. And at first, sometimes they don't accept it, do they? They don't believe it. And that's one of the biggest problems with trying to get people to, to start looking at Jesus. It's because they just have learned not to trust people's motives, you're talking about the Lord, but they don't trust your motives. Um, years ago, I was talking to a guy about his soul, and his constant comment was, you're just trying to put another notch in your gun. You know, in other words, I'm trying to convince him to be a Christian so that I can make another notch in my gun. Now, some people do that. And I think there was a time in my life when I did that. There was a time in my life as a college student, uh, I spent more time trying to teach people about the Bible than I spent studying a lot of times. But you know what I learned? That I was, I thought I was God's lawyer. I thought I was God's attorney, and I worked with that. But you know what was missing? 
Hmm? Love. I mean, I loved him. I told myself I loved him. But, you know, you need to become a Christian. You know, I didn't say it that way, but I worked that way. And uh, I, found, I saw the error of my way. It wasn't very encouraging uh, to myself. So, can we discourage ourselves? How can we discourage ourselves? Thinking about worldly things? Yep. Beating ourselves down constantly? Not leaning on who? Who? Exactly. So we can all be encouragers or discouragers. There's no discouragers in here. I don't see any. And like I said, you encouraged me by being here. And if you heard that Re uh, Craig wasn't going to be here and you still came, you really encouraged me. <laughs> no. Craig's in Boyd preaching. Uh, he'll be here next week. Um, you know that I don't move like Craig. And I certainly don't use the board because I can't. <clears throat> but anybody want to say anything before we close? That's all I've got. Smile. Absolutely. Reed says a smile is encouraging. Where does it come from? The heart. And, and, right. And where, if it comes from the heart, what abides in the heart? Love. It should. Yeah. Thank you very much for precipitating. <laughs> Oh, sure. Go ahead and encourage me, yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs>